Good morning. morning from Nuwara Elia. We have just had a wonderful breakfast at our guest house and we're getting ready to go explore. Despite the beautiful sunny weather, it is actually quite chilly here compared to the rest of Sri Lanka, which has been in the low 30s, high 20s. This is hill country and the temperature is at best 20 degrees. So I have a sweatshirt on today. And I think our plan is just to explore this area, which has some waterfalls, lakes, and tea plantations. So we're excited to taste some locally grown tea, but that was not our original plan. No, it wasn't. So there is a very famous national park around here called Horton Plains. And initially, this was what we wanted to do because there is a viewpoint called the World's End, which apparently is stunning and gives you views for miles upon miles upon miles. However, we took a look into it and we started seeing a number of very recent but very negative reviews. Not because of the hike itself, apparently they said it was very picturesque, but they basically said that the, for one, the pricing was an absolute ripoff, um, and the park staff were also no help in terms of trying to get the payment through. Apparently they wouldn't accept card, and they would only accept the astronomical fee in Lankan rupees, and then they charge their own conversion fees, which basically would mean that for just one person to get into the park as a foreigner you'd probably be paying somewhere between 40 and 50 us dollars per person in order to just get into the park we obviously would want to do a hike like that we would love to be able to see viewpoints of that kind of quality but i think it would definitely leave us with a very bad taste in the mouth and also around this area there is plenty more to see so i think we've opted for that instead yeah i think what put me off was the uncertainty of the price mm. there was nothing posted on their website about the price so it kind of seemed like the staff who works there are able to charge whatever they want on any given day and they kind of just seem to make it up as they go along and there was even reports of the staff laughing among themselves at like how much they were able to charge people to come in and things like that and it just didn't sound like it was going to be an overall positive experience for us yeah if they had posted one price that we knew for certain because of how beautiful we had heard it was i was willing to pay for this particular experience it was the not knowing and the variables in addition to the fact it's about an hour's drive away from here so even the tuk-tuk ride there is fairly expensive that i didn't want to take the risk of turning up being charged an inordinate amount not actually even having enough cash on us to be able to go in, but yet still having had to pay for the tuk-tuk there and back without getting anything out of it. It all just seemed a little risky. But I think we're going to have a great day of adventuring ahead, just the two of us. Exactly. And the great thing is, while a number of these things are going to be a bit of a walk away from each other, they are still walkable. So it should be a great day out. We are now approaching Lover's Leap Waterfall and be warned, it is a steep climb to get up. So why is this called Lover's Leap? Apparently there once was a prince who was rescued by a beautiful woman. They then became lovers. The match was not to the liking of the prince's subjects. And so they decided to immortalize their love by falling from the top of those waterfalls to their death. Bit of a sad story, but it doesn't take it away from the fact that, from what we can already see, it's pretty nice up here.
hike up to Lover's Leap Waterfall was totally worth it. It is absolutely beautiful and a quaint little spot to just come and you could have a picnic, but of course to take some Instagram photos as well. But now we are gonna completely backtrack on ourselves because to get here from our guest house, we walked in the opposite direction of Nuara Elia town. And we're gonna head in that direction now. And one of the things that we're gonna be seeing along the way is the post office here. It's apparently a cute little red building, which is one of the oldest post offices to have existed in Sri Lanka. We were casually browsing some of the markets along here and we ended up finding this fruit. We were offered to try it, we found it amazing, so we decided to get one. Uh, this one ended up costing us 100 rupees, so not even 50 cents. If anybody knows what it actually is though, then we would love to hear about it, so feel free to leave a comment. After a few stops along the way, we have made it to the post office. It was commissioned by the British in 1894 and they built it in what is known as a Tudor Revival architectural style. The cool thing about this is it does retain a lot of the original features including some of the post boxes which still have the royal seal of King George V. And the other really cool thing is it still functions. You can still send posts through this post office to this day. As part of this whole itinerary then the plan was to go to a tea plantation around here and we'd heard of this one called Pedro which apparently is pretty famous. So I put in Pedro Tea Estate onto Google as part of our itinerary and we walked all the way here and we found just a bunch of beautiful tea fields which is lovely but we were hoping to find a place to sit down and enjoy some tea. Because I think that's at their tea factory. Exactly. What we didn't realize is that there is actually a different listing for Pedro, which is the plantation and factory. And that was the one that we were meant to do. And it turns out that that one is actually a 16 minute drive away from this location. So I'm a little bit annoyed at myself because usually I'd like to think I've got a pretty good eye for navigation uh, but uh, yeah on this one I completely done goofed so sorry about that love. I don't mind we still got amazing views we have legs it's an amazing walk but we're just now going to pivot a little bit I think we're going to walk back down to Lake Gregory which is apparently also really pretty and something you should see while you're here in Nuara Elia and grab some food and then we will regroup and figure out if we're going to go to the tea plantation factory and how we're going to do it or what else we feel like doing yep let's find out we've made it down to lake gregory and when we got here, we realized that it is ticketed to get in. It costs 500 rupees, which is about two Canadian dollars. But because we are not interested in renting a boat, we decided that it wasn't worth it to pay the four dollars for us both to go in, even though that still seems pretty cheap. So instead, we decided to put our money into food. We just ended up finding a stand just by the parking lot. And we managed to pick up all of this for just under three dollars. Yeah, it was 740 rupees. And we found a spot which is just outside the entrance. We just hope that we'll be able to 
have our food here uninterrupted and enjoy the lake. This is what we've picked up for lunch. What looks like sausage pizza. Two of these little potato pancakes. What look like battered fish spring rolls. And then finally, two coconut roti. And just like that, we've made it to Pedro's Tea Factory. We were initially hoping to walk, but we then had a look at Google and it said it was going to be a 56 minute walk. So we decided instead to take a tuk-tuk, which only cost us about 700 rupees, so just under $3. And it goes there in about 10 minutes instead. And I don't really feel that bad that we took a tuk-tuk because I already have almost 16,000 steps today and we plan on walking home from here. So we're getting our fitness on. Exactly. But one thing that I should mention is I actually do recommend doing your own walking tour around Nuwara Elia as opposed to taking a tuk-tuk because there is so much natural beauty that you're going to want to stop and take photographs. So it's just nice to do it at your own pace as opposed to whizzing by in a tuk-tuk. Unfortunately, we weren't able to film anything inside on the short 20 minute tour, but we learned so much about tea. So they started by telling us that Pedro Tea Factory was founded in 1885. And I think they said they have over 2000 acres and it's divided into seven different estates, seven different estates. And then we saw that they do this kind of semi-drying process to start with, but the leaves still remain a very like vibrant green, like what you're seeing in the background actually, and they become kind of rubbery. Then what happens is they use machines and one of them rolls them. Then the next machine chops the rolled leaves. And then the next machine filters the leaves into different sizes. So like big pieces, medium pieces, and small pieces. And all of the big pieces are put through that whole process again. After that, they are then taken to another machine where I believe that's when they're actually like baked and dried where they become a darker color. Exactly. And as that process goes on, they are roasted really for the best part of putting it at quite a low temperature for about 20 or so minutes. At which point they then turn the brown or black that we all know and then they're repeatedly cleaned and filtered through until they are then ready as loose leaf teas. Something we didn't realise is that actually the fineness of the ground leaves actually then designates what type of tea you get. So yeah, you said you thought it was a different type of plant, mm. but it's not. It's all the same type of plant. Exactly. So the reason that orange pita may be different to an English breakfast tea, for example, is actually because English breakfast tea is more finely ground. And so as a result, it's a finer tea and therefore it's got a stronger flavor. But also not only a stronger flavor, I believe, but like the strength of caffeine too maybe i think i think so because of the fact that it is more concentrated as a taste and that therefore means that the caffeine does come with it as well yeah. and give you a stronger hit but it's interesting though because apparently even beyond the english breakfast tea there's like an even finer version which is like what sri lankans prefer and i would love to try that at some point point. and they were saying that the Weaker teas, which have like the bigger leaves and granules, are weaker in flavor. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, the finer ones are stronger in flavor. And the stronger ones are always drunk with milk and sugar, whereas the weaker teas, you don't put any milk or sugar in. Exactly. All in all, I mean, it was obviously a very jam packed information session, but I think it's just been great because, I mean, 
I've been a tea drinker for a couple of decades now, and I've always just appreciated a good cup of tea, but it's only been as a result of that that I now know where it's really come from, how it's been made, and why it is the way it is. And so, yeah, this was, I mean, considering the fact that we only paid $2 per person to take a tour around and just get that information, it was priceless, really. Yeah, it was really interesting, and I think now we're going to get to try some tea. Can't wait. After sneakily getting our hands on a second cup of free tea each, we're now on our way home. When we left this morning, we saw a little stand that sells samosas and roti at the bottom of our street and it looked pretty cheap and if lunch is any indicator about that type of thing it'll hopefully also be quite yummy so on our way back to the guest house we are going to stop there pick up some food for dinner and we'll show you what we end up getting this is what we picked up for dinner this here we learned from lunch is actually like a curried fish wrapped in roti it was amazing this is a vegetarian samosa. This is apparently also vegetarian, but it's in a semi-circular shape, so we were intrigued. And this is what we had, I think, for breakfast the other day in Sigaria, where it's kind of like a half bagel, half donut situation, but it's savory. So we got all of this for 750 rupees, which is $3, so great value. So we're gonna enjoy dinner. As with lunch, we can confirm that all of that food was just delicious. But now I think it is time to wind down for the evening, so we're just going to watch some YouTube and turn in for the night. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.